Hi everyone, it's Spider-Man 1991, and it's time for my weekly comic book review. Uh, these comics came out January 16th, 2013, so let's get started with DC. First off, Superboy, number 16, continuing Hell on Earth. Superboy and the Justice League invade the Fortress of Solitude so that they can get a, P a kryptonite shard that Superman kept uh, just in case of emergency so that they can use it on Hell. But... Ba but when but when they get to the fortress, uh, su hell has already activated not just the fortress's security defenses, but also several of the weapons and artifact alien artifacts that Superman's kept in the fortress after all these years. And the league does make their way through into to where the shard is located, but they discover it's missing. And also one of the weapon. And also one of the weapons, which is some sort of teleporter, be which is some sort of like teleporter attack bot, like it teleports a be uh, an alien or a living organism to like a series of pocket dimensions. Uh, the be uh, the weapon pretty much fires it beam fires its beam and it hits Superboy and Superman and it says for super and pretty much then we got a little continuation teaser at the bot at the end that says. Uh, to be continued in Superboy Annual Number One, which will be out next week. Okay, well, I am going to get the Superboy Annual just so that I can see how this ties in. But pretty much this issue, it felt like I mean, it was a little interesting to see Superboy. Uh, in, pretty much the only League member that Superboy has any inter who interact he he interacts the most with is Batman. And I think uh, this would be better, and pretty much, um, it's just, it felt like, mo up until the end, it felt like just this was just filler for that we could shift it to Superboy Annual. Um, but, yeah, Hell on Earth, um, well, we pretty much, you know, I mean, going in to get the Kryptonite, that may have been a good strategy, but really they should have pr thought of that Hell would have found it eventually, Okay. So, all I can say is that uh, felt pretty much just like a teaser for the Superboy Annual, which is going to be out next week. Uh, not really much here in the Hell on Earth for the Hell on Earth crossover. We don't know if Hell is immune to Kryptonite or not. I'm just saying it's a possibility because he has sort of dis displayed other powers that other Kryptonians don't. So, it might be possible he's immune to Kryptonite. However, he did try to hide it, so he might not be. That's all. That's pretty much the only development there. Other than that, teaser for Superboy Annual. Um, I'd say if you're planning on getting the Superboy Annual, maybe read this. But other than that, you don't really have to. Okay. Other than those two reasons, just for the Hell on Earth crossover, but you're really not getting much there. All right, now for something that's really wor that one DC book that I'm really happy came out this week. Batman number sixteen. Batman. Begins his descent into Arkham Asylum. He deals with, he's go, trying to find the Joker, and on on his way, he's dealing with uh, several in, inmates that the Joker get armed. Then, after taking care of the inmates, he goes through a series of villains such as Mister Freeze, Clayface, and the Scarecrow. Then, we finally makes it to where the Joker is. Joker is joined along with Penguin, Riddler, Two Face, and also Joker has four other hostages that are Jet dressed like Justice League members and he kind of makes them like grab a chainsaw which has been which is pretty much stuck in a stump and it's also ha has jumper cables attached to it so that way if any of the hostages touch it they'll die in sort of a King Arthur sword in the stone type of deal that because throughout this whole death of the family story arc death of the family story arc Joker's pretty much been thinking of Batman as the role of like the this king of Gotham and stuff and so he's kind of continuing that illusion by ha with the Legend of the Sword and the Stone with King Arthur and has all the hostages who are dressed like Justice League members, you know, try to do it but and kill them off and, uh, it and Joker manages to kill one hostage but Batman's able to cut the cables with a batarang and stop them but right when but right when Batman's like getting ready to g grab Joker, Joker pretty much pulls down a huge iron gate which separates Batman from the villains and the hostages. And then Joker show point, and then Joker points to a monitor, a monitor where each members of the Batman family, uh, Nightwing, Robin, Red Robin, Red Hood, and Batgirl are 
all in danger. They're pretty, pretty much all the st all the stuff that's going on in their series. It's Batman seeing it, and Joker pretty much like get pretty much touches the nerve with Batman by saying that you know as long as Batman's a lot as long as Batman's allies live, he'll always lose. And so uh, Batman pretty much. Joker pretty much tells Batman to like sit in this electrical chair that he designed to be Batman's throne, so to speak, and Batman sits in it and the chair goes off and it's pretty much implied that Bat and you think that Batman's dead, but he's really not. He's probably just knocked out. Okay, cuz that's not where the story arc ends. And it's also implied more that he's not dead in the co feature, which is pretty much uh Joker which is pretty much Joker mocking the other three villains, two, Penguin, Two-Face, and Riddler, and kicking them out of his plan now because he's done with them, and now he's just going to get back to him and Batman. So, yeah, that's pretty much what happens in Batman number 16. Again, Death of the Family, Death of the Family is awesome. Uh, this story arc has been really amazing ever since it, st ever since it started. Um, Scott Snyder does an amazing job on this book, as always. I cannot recommend this enough. Seriously, if you're not reading Batman, what is wrong with you? This is probably the one DC book that everyone can agree on is awesome. Okay, now it's time for Marvel. And we're going to start off with Captain America. Uh, Captain America, in this issue, uh, Zola is training his daughter Jet uh, for combat. And meanwhile, back to the main plot... Captain America finally gets his Universal Translator to work, and he's able to explain to the Fronx tribe that he, he and his young ward Ian aren't uh, threats to them, and they're not working with Zola. So you know he's able to get some. Not he's he's able to avoid execution, and one of the Fronks named Casul Casul and his wife wife gives Stephen Ian some shelter there and some supplies and. They look after them for a while, but then uh, Steve kind of talks to Kasul about how the leader of the tribe, uh, Zofjor, uh, is kind of like acting like a tyrant, and he's not doing really doing anything about Zola. And soon, suddenly, uh, Zofjor hears about this, finds out about this, and then he attacks Steve, and in the process, kills Kasul. And so, right when Kasul dies, Steve is pretty much able to like gather his strength or whatever, and he fights back, and he's able to beat, beat Softjaw, but then, but unfortunately during the fight, he got cut, and he start, starting to lose a lot of blood, and when he goes later to check his wounds, he discovers that he's suddenly healed, and also an image of Zola appears on his chest, like, you know how Zola's pretty much just like an android, but with like a human face on, with a screen in the middle of his chest with Zola's face on it? Uh, that's pretty much what happens to Steve, Steve, like, suddenly there's, like, a screen, screen type thing, and Zola appears on his chest, like, so, that's a very interesting cliffhanger, and in case you're wondering how this could have happened, well, need I remind you in Captain America number one, uh, right when Steve entered Dimension Z, he did, he was taken captive for an unknown period of time, so, we don't know, so obviously Zola did something to Steve while he was under, right before Steve escaped with Ian. And that's pretty much what happens in Captain America number three. A uh, very good, I'd say this is a pretty great series. Um, it's progressing very nicely. This is definitely different from the Captain America we've had for the past few years. Most of the most of the stories have just been pretty real world, but this one's like really not in that standard anymore. It's Definitely taking Captain America to a different level, and I'm so far I'm liking this story arc. It, it's really amazing, especially the cliffhanger with what Zola did to Captain America. I cannot wait to see what exactly happened. Also, uh, another thing about this, I'm also enjoying. We're getting uh, several flashbacks back to the 1920s when Steve Rogers was a little boy, and we're kind of seeing him, seeing him learning how to how he developed his courage and pretty much his character. So, yeah, those flashbacks are all another interesting aspect about this book. Uh, I would definitely recommend Captain America to peop to everyone who wants to read this. Well, who's willing to give this a try. It's amazing. They should. Okay, next up. Daredevil number 22. 
the superior Spider-Man, who last issue we know is work, who's kind of following orders from DA, from District uh, Assistant District Attorney McDuffie, aka also Daredevil, Daredevil Matt Murdock's love interests, uh, attacks Daredevil while he's still dressed up like Matt Murdock. And Matt's a little stunned, and he's able to sneak to an alley, change it to his Daredevil uniform, and he does fight. And he, you know, he's not really fighting Spider-Man, but he does sense something's a little off about Spider-Man. And of course, if you've read Amazing and Superior Spider-Man, you know why. But pretty much Daredevil's, his super sense, his radar senses and stuff, he's pretty much... He pretty much is convinced that this is still Peter Parker, but there's just something off about his personality. Like, his heart rate's, heartbeat's normal, everything else. Just something off about his personality. And right during right during the little little fight, uh, they get interrupted by Stoltman, who's uh, upgraded his armor with some old hydraulics from Dr. Octopus's old arms. And so Daredevil and Spider-Man are able to work together, defeat Stiltman. Fuck, that's so hard. And after, and afterwards, Daredevil kind of explains everything to Spider-Man about like what happened for the past few issues, how Kristen McDuffie thought he was crazy, and but he really wasn't. And so they're kind of like, "We good, we good, we're good." And Daredevil, and Daredevil's like, "Are you sure you're okay?" And Spidey's like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." Of course, we all know that that's not really Peter Parker under the mask. Okay, well, technically it is, but not Peter Parker in the brain. Okay. Okay, well, back to Daredevil. Um, after the whole thing with Spider-Man, Matt, go Matt goes and buys Foggy Nel his partner, law partner and best friend Foggy Nelson a cake, and he talks to him at the office, and they're able to make work things out and pa and get ready to re restart the firm together. But Matt senses something's off about a little. Also senses something's off with Foggy and. Foggy tells him that he's been to the doctor a few times and they're running tests and and he think and Matt asks him tests for what and Foggy says he might have cancer. And that is where the issue ends. Well, all I can say is this is definitely about Daredevil's best friends. Okay, this is about both his his best friend as a superhero, Spider Man, and also his best friend as Matthew Murdoch, Foggy Nelson. Okay, um, both friends definitely have changed. Spider-Man getting possessed, getting pos swapping brains with one of his greatest enemies, and Foggy Nelson, who's just discovered he has he might have cancer. Um, that is definitely a good cliffhanger for this, though. I'll, I'll say that. Also, um, it is very interesting to see that Sp the new sp new Spider-Man interact with Daredevil, especially because I think. You know, other than Johnny Storm, we most fans consider Daredevil Spidey's number one guy. And so, you know, he's able to fool Daredevil. That means Doc Ock is getting away with it. Um, also, the thing about Foggy Nelson, I'm very interested to see what's going to happen there. I mean, what's going to happen to Foggy? Um, will he die? Will he get cured? Stuff like that. And also, I'm, all, I'm also happy that Foggy, Foggy and Matt are able to work things out. And you know, try get get their lives back to normal, as normal as possible. So yeah, Daredevil is still an awesome. Everyone loves this series, and I am one of them. This is great. You should definitely pick up Daredevil, especially now because this is a new. I'd say this is a good jumping on point. Issue twenty two, your jumping on point. Go out, get it. You'll see how awesome this series is. And you'll start picking it up. You won't regret it. Okay, final comic. All new X Men number six. Uh, Jean Jean Grey wakes up from a nightmare um, involving Cyclops, Magneto, and Wolverine, and the Phoenix, and she print and after she's you know wakes up screaming, uh, Kitty Pride shows up and comforts her and gives her some advice about controlling her telekin her telekinetic telepathy and powers from that she learned from the older Jean Grey. And also, Storm comes in and tells her that she should now be leading the team of original X Men, time displaced X Men, because right now Scott's going through some stuff with what he's discovered about his future. So he's not in a, in a fit place to lead. Most of the other young X Men will listen to her. So 
Gene's pretty much the new leader. Also, Scott, who's pretty much shunned by every single kid, almost shunned by every single kid at the Gene Gray School, uh, kind of decides to run away. So, he does one of the most idiotic things you can do there. He runs away on Wolverine's bike. Yeah, not good. It really isn't good, especially when Logan finds out. He's not happy, no, no. You think he was going to kill Cyclops before? He's going to do way worse. Way worse now. Okay, so anyways, Scott steals Wolverine's bike. He stops at a convenience store. Uh, Logan finds him, and he talks to him for a bit, and it seems like Logan, Logan tries to, like, you know, it seems like Logan is almost about to get along with Scott, but then... Scott blasts Logan with his eye beams and takes off again, and Lo Wolverine still follows him in pursuit. And meanwhile, two other, th and pretty much the issue closes off with two things. One is Warren finally meeting his future self, Angel, and someone bringing the attention of, and someone bringing a new, a uh, news article about Cyclops and Wolverine fighting in Manchester, and it's the young, and keep in mind this is young Cyclops here. And they brought the attention to Mystique. Yeah. Uh, this was a great issue. Uh, great issue, um, after the first, especially after the first story arc. Because this is like, you know, it's kind of telling us what's to come. We've still got Scott, Scott dealing with all of the damage that, his, that he did, that his present day self did and what he has to live with now. And also, we're introducing some other villain elements into the story, like Mystique finding out. About what she, about the present original X Men being here? I'm interested to see where that's going, and also Warren finally meeting his future self because that was something he was curious about uh, for the past five issues. You heard Warren saying like, "Wait, where am I? Why aren't I in the future?" So yeah, I'd say all new X Men is definitely shaping up to be a great great series. I really enjoyed the first story arc. If you Heard all the good reviews about it, and you weren't sure whether to jump on, well, I'd say start with this issue right now, because we're entering a new story arc, uh, we're introducing the young, starting to introduce the young, I believe next issue, uh, Mystique confronts Scott about what's, about what, about what's going on, uh, can't wait to read that, uh, still, this issue, very awesome, uh, the Jean Grey scenes were also, also pretty cool as well, uh, really, Thought I really laughed. I gotta be honest. When I saw Scott stealing Wolverine's bike and Wolver and Logan's reaction to it, I thought, "Okay, Wolverine's gonna kill him." That that's pretty much gonna end this series right now. That was, that that's what pretty much made made this issue for me. <laughs> okay, well, um, that's it for. Yeah, sorry for the blinking. I got something in my eye. Uh, okay. All right, well, that's pretty much it for this comic review. Uh, All new X Men number six. This is a good jumping on point for new readers. I'd say if you weren't sure whether or not to pick up this series, it's I assure you, it's great. Start reading it with this. Daredevil number twenty two. Another good jumping on point. You should definitely pick this up. It's really awesome, really awesome. And also, if you're a fan of the Spider Man Daredevil relationship, pick this up so you can see DD DD and act. Re, um, Interact with the superior Spider-Man. Captain America number three. Still continuing a great a great story arc. It's very interesting to see the about what happens in the end. Can't wait can't wait to see the rest of the story arc. Batman number sixteen. Probably the best book by DC out that's coming out right now. It's extremely awesome. I would tell everyone if you can only get one comic this week, you should get Batman. And Superboy number 16. Pretty much a little development for he for Hell on Earth, but mostly a teaser for the annual coming out next week. Okay, and that is it for my comic review for this week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being subscribed and still watching Spider-Man 1991 saying see you later.